Yo, what's going on everybody? It's Straight Outta Boston here, and today I'm back for episode number 6 of my 1998 Tampa Bay Devil Rays OOTP series here on Out of the Park Baseball 16. So today we're at the mid-season update for 2000, and we are in first place right now, 45-32. and 32. It's been a really fantastic start to the season. Uh, we've got a four and a half game lead over the Toronto Blue Jays, who are in second place in the division. So we have had a really good start to the year, and it's been thanks in large part to our rotation and our pitching staff. We're seventh in runs scored, but first in runs against in the AL. And uh, really the staff ace, Tony Saunders, has been fantastic so far, 2-6-0 ERA. Tim Hudson's also been really good, 3-8-6. And then Daniel Wilson and Esteban Loaiza, they've both been solid. Barry Zito's made 11 starts on his own, and uh, he has a 5 one ERA, so not too shabby. Um, but anyway... So, and uh, we'll take a look at the lineup too. I mean, everyone's really been hitting, but um, you know, you gotta you gotta remember that it is the steroid era, so it is pretty typical for guys to hit. Uh, but the guy who's turned into a bona fide superstar is Paul Konerko. He is on pace for a seven-win season. He's on pace for 53 homers. He's got four and a half star rating now. He is looking like a full-blown superstar, really taking the league by storm. And uh, we've had uh, we have a little bit of a new infield. You know, we have we claimed this guy Neil Roberts off of waivers, a kind of a defensive specialist. He has not played very well since coming over here. Phil Nevin has not been uh, doing too well. We traded Aaron Boone, and uh, in that trade, I think we picked up. Uh, I don't remember to be honest. I'm gonna actually have to look at it. But um, what do you want to do here? Manager, manager history, transactions history. So let's find Aaron Boone here. The Aaron Boone trade was right here. We traded him for Ryan Christensen. So we got Christensen when Randy Wynn went down for six weeks. So I needed a fill-in center fielder. And uh, Christensen's been really good ever since coming over. He's the backup outfielder now. We got Trot Nixon back down in AAA. And, um, yes, we got Neil Roberts. We got Phil Nevin. We have, um, where we had Mike Vientos. I don't know where he might have sent him out to AAA. Or maybe he got DFA'd. I don't even remember. I don't remember what happened. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think I was thinking of, uh, I was playing my Colorado Rockies save earlier today, getting that ready for, uh, to record that for another episode soon, and, uh, got one of the guys confused, so. We're missing Brett Boone. Um, he is, was hitting the ball pretty well, but the fact that he's having to play third base was really minimizing his defensive value, so I started putting him at second base because Michael Hart had been struggling, um, but then Boone got hurt. He separated the shoulder, so he's out for a little while, um, and you can see Michael Hart not really playing too well, you know, providing us some defensive value but really nothing at the plate so we'll have to monitor that but all right so let's start uh skimming forward here actually there is a uh, one trade i want to make right now because the guy is on the trading black arthur rhodes who is due uh five million the rest of the year and then he has a player option for next year but i think he might decline that player option because he's having a really good season and he's 30 years old he's probably going to want to cash in on that and we can get him for pretty much nothing you know we could give up wade boggs wade boggs really hasn't even played for us this year. He's really just on the team for ceremonial reasons. And um, we could also give up Scott Aldred, a guy who I sent down earlier in the year. So we can pretty much get him for uh, borderline nothing. And I think I'm going to give him Scott Aldred. Yeah, he had that one good year in 1998, but it's not really been good since. So, all right, we will do that. And we'll pick up Arthur Rhodes. Rhodes is a good guy. And $5 million salary, even if we had to keep him on next year, wouldn't be the biggest deal in the world. So we'll send down Kevin Walker. I had called up Kevin Walker, but his ratings are down to just two stars, and he had not been playing well at the big league level, so Arthur Rhodes, definitely an upgrade over him. So that will help fortify our bullpen. We're still going with three lefties here. We've got Hunter Mercado up. Jim, uh, I really want bullpen up, because Jim Messer, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, <laughs> as always, um... Yeah, has not really been doing well, so I'm going to demote him to a middle relief role. And we're going to promote Rudy Sanders to the closer job because he has had a fantastic start to the season. Still walking a lot of guys, but uh, even though the bat bit was kind of low, I'm just going to ride him while he's hot. So, All right, we'll keep an eye on the waiver wire as we simulate forward here. And I apologize if you guys can hear my air conditioner in the background. It's just way too hot for me to try and record without my air conditioner on right now. It is humid as all hell, and I just do not like the humidity. So... Anyway, we've got three games against the Yankees here. We take the first two. Can we get the sweep? Oh, no, no, no. We uh, take two or three, though. Now we have Detroit. I see Pokey Reese on waivers. Check him out. Uh, probably not worth picking up. CJ Nikowski. <laughs> Paul Molitor is on waivers. Wow. That'd be a good guy to pick up. Let's take a look at some of his stats. Oh, yeah. Crazy good. But all right. 14 games over 500 right now. We have a chance to win another series against Detroit, and we do. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been surprised, but we've just playing, been playing consistent baseball. I mean, I, I like I said, we were sort of started out hot and then played 500 ball for a couple months. But, I mean, even as of late, you know, we've been consistently winning series, and 
really just, I think, playing a really good brand of baseball, and I'm really pleased with how things have gone. I honestly cannot have imagined doing this well in just Season 3. But um, we've got a series against Florida here, so let's set our NL lineups. Because that is muy importante. And um, the question is what to do with a guy like Cliff Floyd. We could put him in for Randy Wynn, or maybe Raul Labanez, or even Sean Green. Um, why don't we do this? We'll do every second game. Move him out of the lineup, move Abanez up, move Roberts up. Actually, move Roberts down. And. Oops, I got to put Neil Roberts in as the backup, second and third baseman, or second and shortstop. And then Floyd every second game there, and every third game in right field. So he'll play, everyone will play twice in a typical uh, interleague series. But alright, we got the All Star break coming up. So we'll see who gets on the All-Star team for us. I imagine Tony Saunders will be there. Paul Konerko probably as well. We lose 2 of 3 to Florida, but that's alright. Um, so let's see. Tampa Bay, we've got Tim Hudson with a 3-6-8 ERA in the first half. Tony Saunders with a 2-5-4 ERA. Uh, Esteban Loiza makes it as well with a 3-5-3 ERA. Only 5.5 Ks per 9. But he's not walking people, he's not giving up too many home runs, and he's getting the job done. Uh, uh, let's see, Rudy Sienas makes it, so we just promoted him to the closer role. And let's see, Paul Konerko, I'm assuming. Ooh, no Paul Konerko, the first base first base in the AL is just too good. I mean, look at these guys, Frank Thomas, Rafael Palmero, David Ortiz. I sort of understand, but I don't know. Konerko is having quite the year, but no position players for us. Actually, no, oh, there, Paul Konerko. Oh, you know, he's lifted as a left fielder, that's what threw me off. But yeah, Paul Konerko does make it. He's our only position player. All right, so let's see who wins the All-Star game. Uh, I wonder if this... I'm not sure if this, like, if the winner of this will have home field advantage because they don't in the World Series, I mean, because they didn't implement that rule until... Uh, I don't remember what year, but it was definitely not 2000 because I know they didn't do it till after they tied the All-Star game in Milwaukee that one year. <coughs> but anyway, so the AL uh, looks like they win it 13-6. to So now we come out of the break with a three-game set against the Montreal Expos. And I'm not really sure, you know, I'm starting, you know, as we approach the deadline here, I'm trying to think about where we could add to really improve the team. I mean, maybe up the in the middle of the infield, we could upgrade at second base, third base. I don't know, but, I mean, the pitching staff has really been good. I mean, I think the bullpen can always use a buff, but I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to evaluate it when we get closer to the break. We're trying to take two or three from Atlanta. We cannot. Now we're back in the AL, play in Toronto. Losing the first game there, only a two-game set against Toronto. We split that. Now we have New York. Bob Howery, who's this guy? Mm, no one too good. So, right, now we go into New York. Is this the Yankees? Yes, it is. We, ooh, we lose the first two. Now we're back to only 12 games over 500. Ooh, we get swept. So, stumbling a little bit here. The Red Sox closing in. They're only a game and a half back. We're 3 and 7 in our last 10. About a week to go before the deadline here. So, we'll see how this next week goes. We know we're going to be buyers this year. We definitely have a, a great chance at winning the division. There's no doubt about that. We have to rebound, though. See what we can do against Detroit. Come on, can we win the series? I'm always trying to win series. I always think that's a good baseline. But all right, we do do, just, we do, do that. Trade proposal from Boston. No thanks. I'm not giving you Steve Brown. All right. So now we have three against KC in KC. A little bit of a central road trip here four against KC actually but we have taken the first three in the series we sweep them alright that is what I like to see so we've got the trade deadline coming up Williamson's out for a week uh, let's get right to July 31st Brett Boone is ready to come back that is great um, let's see Neil Roberts he's been playing a little bit better as of late so I kinda wanna keep him on over Phil Nevin I think Brown we probably wanna keep Brown up as the uh, backup catcher Veritek definitely is going to be the starter for now. So, I don't know. Nevin might be the guy to get rid of to get uh, to get Brett Boone back in here. But, um, all right. So, let's do that. Let's... One of the things is we could use Nevin as trade bait for something. Um, like, even a potentially a reliever we could... I don't know. The bullpen's been pretty solid. I mean, Mercer... I'm just going to call him Jimmy Mercer. That's, I'm deciding that's his name. Jimmy Mercer. Um... I don't know. I mean, I want to keep him in the bullpen. His FIP is still not too bad. He's walking a lot of guys, but not giving up too many home runs. Still almost a strikeout in an inning. It's just his strikeouts are actually up. His walks are up as well, though. You can see the bad FIP is pretty high. So, I don't know. I mean, I think he could turn it around. 
Uh, I don't think we need to add to this rotation, though. I think if this is our five, I mean, even if Zito had to step up into a number four job in a playoff series, I think I'd be pretty confident going with him, to be honest. I don't really think we need another starter. Uh, maybe starting depth, like we could acquire like some sort of six starter slash long relief bullpen guy, maybe to replace Hunter Merc or Hector Mercado. I could see us doing that, maybe. But as for the lineup, um, so we're going to add in, we're going to throw Brett Boone back out there. Boone and Hart, I think I'm good going with them two at second base. Third base, kind of, I don't know, we could, I think we could use someone else, though, at third base. But, alright, let's, first things first, let's uh, shop around Phil Nevin. If we can find that sort of six starter slash swing guy that I'm looking for, for Phil Nevin, I think I'll probably pull the trigger on that type of trade. And uh, send Mercado back down to AAA, because we already have, we have three lefties in the bullpen as it is, we only need two. Um, alright, so... I'm just looking for anyone, like, I'm like, like someone a little bit worse than Esteban Loaiza, maybe, not Hideki Urabu. <laughs> Urabu is pretty horrible. Kind of like he was in real life. I don't know, he'd be interesting to bring in, though, as that swing guy. <laughs> um, let's see, Hideo Nomo could be an option. He had a good year last year, I know that. He's almost traded for him in the offseason. Um, he's been starting all year, though. He's probably going to want to stay in the rotation. I'm really just looking for a long reliever. And this 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 guy probably wouldn't even... Whoever this role is probably wouldn't even end up on the postseason roster. To be honest. But we're not really getting the kind of guys I'm looking for in this. On the trade block, there's really nothing. So... We're also looking for a third base type. Hmm. Let's go back to the trade block. None of these guys can really play third base. <laughs> Sorry, Tony Gwynn. Mark Grace. Mm. I don't know. I might have to do some manual shopping. I think I'm gonna have to go do some uh, some manual trade shopping. All right. So rather than uh, go for like a small trade, like I was talking about getting maybe like a six starter or another uh, infield bat, I decided to kind of go big with this one. Troy Glaus is gonna be my target from the Anaheim Angels. Glaus. I gotta Troy Glaus. I gotta make sure I pronounce this right if I'm gonna trade for him. <laughs> but uh, yes, Troy Glaus. The Angels have two like stud third basemen. One of them is Ho is Hayes' Reyes here, but we would not be able to get him. He is 21 years old and is probably well, probably just a little bit more valuable than Glaus, Glaus, Troy Glaus. So I'm going to be trading for Glaus then. And uh, yes, he's going to take over at third base full time. Hopefully, steps into the role this year and takes it like you know sort of by storm. The other, the other guy I was targeting was um, from the Phillies, Scott Rowland. Rowan would probably have a more of an immediate impact, like he's having a, an incredible season as it is. Like, let me see, I was trying to find a similar package, but I think um, they are, I think the the Phillies value Rowan a little bit more than the Angels value Glaus, just based on the Angels' uh, positional depth there. We would offer Boone and Christensen on top of this, let me see, because I don't know, if we can offer the same pack, ooh, we can even offer less. So, I don't know, the thing about Roland versus Glaus is Roland we'd have to re-sign in a couple years, but it also makes us a lot better this year. Like, we could really go for it this year. And I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling like we should go for it this year. Like, I think window, you never know how big that window is going to be. Like, I think we should go full throttle with it right now. I say that as my air conditioner goes full throttle and ramps up. Um, Alright, so, we didn't even have to give up Brett Boone. But if we do this, I think I'd rather give up Boone than Christensen. If I could. Oh, yes, I can keep Christensen. That is great. Could I keep Nevin, too, possibly? That would be ideal. Um, mm, I might be able to, let me see here, offer up Jason Johnson and someone else, or Esteban Yan or something. Mm, nah, we're probably going to have to go up Nevin anyway. Okay, it's fine. And can we keep Nixon? I don't really care. Okay, we'll, we'll keep Nixon if we can, then. All right, so there we go. Scott Rowland for Steve Brown, Phil Nevin, and Brett Boone. All right, and Scott Scott Rowland is, like I said, he was on a rebuilding, a rebuilding Phillies team, and he was having a fantastic season. So he's going to step right in, and be our starting third baseman. Put him there. We're going to hit him. Probably hit him fifth, I guess. I want to keep Canerco up there. Um. Yeah, we'll keep it like that. Or actually, we could bump. We could do this. Oh, yeah, I think I like this a little bit more. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Canerco second, rolling fourth. 
Uh, we can swap these two. We'll get we'll hit roll in second. Could I go fourth green? Green ahead of Floyd. Uh, I can probably swap those two. It's interchangeable. All right. And so we need a new backup catcher now. Roberts and Hart. We're gonna have probably pl pretty much platoon. Um, so we'll start Roberts here. We're gonna start Hart every third game against righties. And Hart will also be the backup infielder in this case. And then copy and paste. And we'll just swap these two. And I don't really want Roberts playing against lefties, to be honest. We'll just let Hart... Because I long-term, Hart is the guy, so I want to develop him and give him more playing time. Um, Alright, then we need to find a backup catcher still. We have 24 guys in the roster, so we'll call up someone temporarily for now. Um, we'll call up Mike DeFelice. But we'll probably try and find somebody through a waiver trade in August. Um, and then, other than that, we still kind of could use that sixth guy, that sixth starter. But I suppose if it came down to it, we could just use Jason Johnson in that role or Tay DeBrower. Uh, now, Johnson's really never had success at the big league level. Brower's hardly had success at the minor league level. So it's kind of a tricky spot. If we, like, if we suffer two injuries to our rotation, we'd be really screwed. But one, we can probably survive. So... I think we'll be fine in that sense. Um, but alright, so let's just check the waiver wire right now, see if there are any catchers. does not look like it. So I'm just going to have to address that in August, but uh, I will, uh, since that's not really a minor thing, I'm not going to bother. Uh, I won't throw that in the episode or anything, because I am just too lazy. But alright, so that is going to do it. 60 and 44, we just acquired Troy Gloss. We're going to pass the trade deadline here. And uh, we just we didn't acquire Troy Gloss, we acquired Scott Rowland. Thank God I don't have to say Gloss's name anymore. Vlad the Impaler Guerrero. I've never heard anyone call him that. Just saying. But anyway, good contract. Alright, so that is going to do it. Hope you guys did enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I'm out. Peace.